So apparently Google just released Gemini 3.0 and didn't even bother with a press release. A few X users stumbled onto it like finding a body in their crawl space. Everyone's testing it out because Google's marketing department is apparently on a smoke em if you got em break. Smoke if you got em. Meanwhile, let's talk about the actual chaos happening this week because there's even more since Monday. NVIDIA has become the AI industry's Don Corleone, except instead of horse heads, they're threatening to withhold GPUs. Here's the situation. NVIDIA is worth $4.5 trillion. They've gained more market value since ChatGPT launched than Microsoft and Apple combined were worth in 2022. That's so powerful that Google and Amazon called Jensen Huang before announcing their own competing chips. <laughs> Imagine calling your competitor to warn them about... Uh, the fact that you're about to compete with them, that's just weird to me. Microsoft got told they'd be lower in line for GPUs if they didn't buy NVIDIA's special server racks. Satya Nadella himself had to get involved before NVIDIA backed off. You know, when your VP is threatening the CEO of Microsoft, you might have a little bit too much power. OpenAI mentions NVIDIA more than AMD when announcing their AMD deal. Sam Altman tweets about partnering with AMD and name drops NVIDIA twice versus AMD once. It's like announcing your wedding and thanking your ex more than your spouse. Think tank uh, researchers are literally afraid to publish anything critical of NVIDIA's China chip sales because they might get fired or get hit with media smear campaigns. The only company with balls? Anthropic. Why? Well, because they diversified away from NVIDIA chips so Jensen can't threaten to cut off their supply. Everyone else seems to be too scared to speak up. This is what monopoly power looks like when you wrap it in a leather jacket and call it innovation. Speaking of Anthropic, uh, let's talk about the most savage financial flex of 2025 so far. Anthropic says they'll be breaking even by 2028, while OpenAI says they will be losing $74 billion by 2028. The kicker? Google might invest in Anthropic at a $350 billion valuation. Meanwhile, OpenAI is out here burning through cash like they're trying to heat the sun or something. OpenAI is investing so much in chips and data centers that they need near-constant fundraising just to stay alive. And speaking of staying alive, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't. I would appreciate it. Good grief, I was supposed to get a haircut today, but my hairstylist called in sick down at Bob's Tire and Barbershop. And my white walls didn't come in e uh, today either, even though Bob's promised me that they would. A whole afternoon shot to hell. Anyway, where were we? Jan LeCun, Turing Award winner, met as chief AI scientist, literally one of the godfathers of modern AI, is leaving Meta to start his own company. Why? Well, because Meta's AI division is apparently a dumpster fire. Meta's AI app, 2.7 million daily users. For context, that's a little pathetic for a company with 3 billion users across its platforms. The $600 billion bet, Meta has pledged $600 billion in AI infrastructure. For reference, that's roughly the GB GDP of Poland. They bought a 49% stake in Scale AI for $14.3 billion, and then basically did away with those people that just wanted the top guy or guys. They're paying researchers $100 million per year each, and their stock has lost most of its 2025 gains. Internal chaos is, is king. The superintelligence labs, yes, that's what they call it at Meta, is apparently a mess of shifting strategy and short-term results focus. Lacoon is walking away from all of this to build what he calls a world model, AI systems that actually uh, understand reality instead of just auto-completing text really well. He's been publicly skeptical of the LLM hype train, and now he's piecing out to prove everyone wrong. When one of the three people invented deep learning quit your company, that's pretty much a vote of no confidence right there. While everyone is fighting over who can lose money the fastest, they're also building data centers like they're playing SimCity on meth. And yes, I'm from the Ozark, so, you know, the Ozark on Netflix and Ozark Law on Hulu. In fact, you can probably see me on Ozark Law. <laughs> so I know a thing or two about it. Anthropic, $50 billion for U.S. data centers in Texas and New York. Microsoft, building interconnected AI data centers in Wisconsin and Atlanta that share data at near light speed. That's pretty cool. Two, uh, two data centers in different locations that can share data. That's a good idea. It's, it's ideas like that that will change AI from just tools to stuff that actually works someday. 
Uh, I'm not, as I've said, I'm not anti AI necessarily. I'm anti funding like they're going nuts uh, when we don't have any clear, there's no clear plan. You know, they think throwing inference at it is going to work, but they don't know. But they're, you know, they're spending billions of dollars in all these data centers. They may be right. They may prove me wrong. I don't know. I just think it's nuts. Uh, Google, $8 billion plus on European infrastructure. These aren't buildings. These are gigawatt scale facilities. And, you know, a gigawatt can power 750,000 homes. They're building these in two to three years, which is just insane considering the, the permits, you know, the permitting process for that should take that long. Oh, and according to J.P. Morgan, the AI industry needs to generate $650 billion in annual revenue just to break even. And that's on investments through 2030. It's not fake data, but uh, speaking of fake, here's another fake commercial. I hope you enjoy it. On a very special Hallbook Channel Christmas original. Broken down on the highway, all alone and scared, warm smell of hot pavement. Rising up in the air, up ahead in the distance, I saw pretty Christmas lights. The hair on my neck stood up on its end, cause it's a warm August night. Welcome to the Snowden Lodge forever. Such a lovely place, such a lovely place, such a stagnant pace. There's just enough room at the Snowden She hoped that he could rescue her from her feelings of distraught Relax, said the young man, smile because it's Christmas Eve You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave Welcome to the Snowden Lodge forever Such a lovely place, such a lovely place, such a stagnant The season is always the reason in Wonderland Town. And the Snowden Lodge Forever will bring high-powered city attorney Holly Berry a new outlook on life and love, where maybe everything isn't as it seems. Or is it? Welcome to the Snowden Lodge Forever. Such a lovely place, such a lovely place, such a stagnant pace. There's just enough room at the Snowden Lodge Forever. That one was also made uh, last December, not as bad as the Medicare one, but still not that great. Maybe one of these days, if I ever get what I'm building finished, I'll have time to make some new ones. Um, show you exactly how far the tools have come. The tools themselves are impressive. I think I've said that many times. Um, you know, it, it's it's the it's the the AI itself that needs to catch up. You know, the tools that they've built, I like them. They're fun. They're fun to play with. They're they're time savers. Uh, don't be afraid of those. I, there's a couple people in the comments section that I've told them, you know, start your own business. You've got this company moving in on your territory. Heck with them. You're the expert. Build your own. Okay, while America is busy with this circular financing bubble, China blocked all foreign AI chips from state-funded data centers. No NVIDIA, no AMD, no Intel. No twisted sister. Full domestic chip push. Jensen Wong warns China has 1 million people working on AI 24-7. The U.S. may be 20,000 in Silicon Valley. China will have more AI compute than the rest of the world combined by 2027. That's a little scary. This is what happens when your national security policy is dictated by one company's stock price, basically. The AI Timeline Holy War. In a rare moment of sanity, both the AI 2027 Doomers and the AI as Normal Technology Groups published a joint essay agreeing on some things, which in and of itself is impressive. 
before strong AGI, AI is pretty normal. And I think that's where we are now um, for most of us who have used it. And that's, that's more and more every day. You know, when I first started this, it, there was only like, a, what was it, 6.4% of Gen Xers that had even tried it. I think that number is most, most uh, higher now. It's, it's a lot higher now. And that's good. Uh, two, if strong AGI actually happens, stuff gets weird. Well, yeah. Three, most benchmarks will saturate soon, which means AI will ace all the tests. Four, AI, AIs will still fail at booking a flight to Paris. And that's what we talked about last uh, episode about the AI agents. And, uh, you know, again, this is as of today. You know, somebody said something about uh, I was wrong and that we had no idea what what AI can actually do. And I, I admit there's probably a huge difference on consum consumer AI's ability and, and what AI can actually do. You know, what did Ilya actually see was, was the thing back in November of 23. And uh, uh, there had been a show, I can't remember the name of it, it was one on the Netflix or Hulu or something where they had an AI in the basement because <laughs> it ripped off the arm of, of its handler. Uh, it's not funny, but it was, but, uh, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, there still could be, you know, there still could be things in the basement we don't know about probably are, it's probably for our, our own good. And it's probably good that they've, they're keeping a handle on it if they are, uh, next strong AGI probably won't arrive before 2029. AI alignment is completely unsolved. And that means aligning AI with, uh, human beliefs, um, morals, laws and such forth. Don't give AIs control of nucle nuclear weapons. Well, yeah, thanks. That's, uh, that's one you really need to spell out there. Guys. I'm glad you can both, both groups can rely on that. The most, the, the funniest hedge prediction, we all expect that strong AI will, AGI will probably not arrive before 2029. And in early 2029, the world will probably still look basically like it does today. Damn. Those guys should go to Vegas or something with predictions like that. I mean, that's remarkable. Meanwhile, in the real world, Elon Musk got shareholders to approve a $1 trillion pay package for him so he can keep control of Tesla's robot army. Yes, he literally said he needs 25% of the company so the robots don't fall into the wrong hands. Okay, that's scary. Tesla Optimus must claims humanoid robots will be bigger than cell phones and Tesla will make a million of them. All right. Yeah, sure, Elon. As soon as a Cybertruck becomes profitable and doesn't resemble a dumpster on wheels. Meta's fraud problem. 10% of Meta's 2024 revenue, $16 billion, came from fraudulent or banned ads. Users see 15 billion high-risk scam ads daily. But sure, let's trust them with super intelligence. You know what I'm talking about there on Facebook and stuff when you see those ads and things and uh, they show you those demonstrations, but they don't really talk a whole lot about the company. You might want to check those out before you, you uh, send them any money. <laughs> just, just a uh, helpful uh, hint from Uncle Rod here. GPT 5.1 is has been released. OpenAI dropped GPT 5.1 with adaptive reasoning and personality controls. Uh, you can now pick ChatGPT's personality. You know, too bad you can't pick financially solvent as a character. Blue Origin versus China, Jeff Bezos promises to move heaven and earth to help NASA reach the moon faster because China is about to beat us there. Nothing says American innovation like losing the space race and the AI race to the same opponent. The bottom line, everyone is building gigawatt data centers to train models that can't book a flight but might accidentally become gods. We're debating whether AGI arrives in 2027 or, you know, never. And somehow, through all of this chaos, the most rational actor is Anthropic, the company everyone initially dismissed as the safety nerds. That's what they called them. Turns out maybe we shouldn't bankrupt ourselves was a real innovation all along. When you're too scared to criticize your chip supplier, you don't have a business. You have a hostage situation with quarterly earnings. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>